On this episode of Resi Week, Sound United acquires BMW and Infocom Connected. All this and more on this episode of Resi Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is Resi Week, episode 228, Sound United. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Daylight, the leading producer of high-quality projection screens worldwide. And by Just Add Power, the global leader in video over IP solutions with systems that give you easy installation, unmatched scalability, and outstanding performance. Welcome to this episode of Resi Week, your weekly roundup of all the latest news and stories for the residential AV industry. I'm your host, Matt D. Scott for avnation.tv, and this week, we are pleased to be joined by a whole bunch of my good friends. First, we have Mr. Jeremy Gowacki. He is the executive editor of Residential Tech Today. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Then we have Katie McGregor-Bennett. She is the president of KMB Communications. How are you, man? Oh, I'm doing great. Doing great. Glad to be here. Thank you for being here. Then we have Peter Aylett coming to us from uh, somewhere across the pond. I'm assuming you're in London today. Close. Close. Not far. Close enough. He is a uh, partner at HTE. How are you, sir? Splendid and tremendous. Thanks, Matt. Thank you for being here. And last but certainly not least, we have Mike Respropo. He is the owner of Respropo Innovations. How are you, sir? Very good. Thank you for having me. We've kind of got everything covered. We've got the middle. We've got Europe. We've got the, the mountains. we got the coast. It's going to be a fun show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's kick this off with a story that made the, uh, I don't want to say the weird news, but it, it was announced at a very odd time. It was late, late, late in the day, not even like 5 p.m. West Coast, like, I don't know, nine o'clock Eastern time. Sound United is planning to acquire Bowers and Wilkins, uh, otherwise known as B and W, not BMW. That's the car. This is the speaker. All right. Uh, this is a story that comes to us from Residential Tech Today and Jeremy Glowacki. So we will start with you, sir. The, the odd timing of this announcement, uh, besides the fact, this is not something that I expected. This is not something that I even heard a rumor that they were looking for a partner or looking to sell or looking for anything. This kind of came out of left field, uh, especially because it is B&W. This is one of those stalwart brands that's been around forever and seems to be incredibly stable. Um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you see from this? Were, were, were you surprised by this? Is this a huge move for Sound United? Yeah, I mean, Sound United is, uh, is looking at world domination right now. It looks like in this, uh, this space. I mean, they just keep acquiring more and more audio brands. And uh, I was really perplexed by the Friday announcement. I, I did uh, kind of ask around and it's um, it's one of those things that maybe just because it wasn't closed yet, they just didn't want to field a bunch of questions about it. They wanted to get the news out there, but it's sort of odd because that's the PR Barry day, you know, like, yeah. you know, and you talk about how late in the day it was even, you know, on top of that. So um, I, <laughs> I spoke to someone who won't be, be named that was involved in one of the announcements that was pieced together and she said she might have been a couple glasses into her Friday night when she found out that she needed to put some words together so um, I, uh, I'm i still trying to piece it together not everything ends up closing Sound United's had some deals that haven't gone through in the end mm -hmm. so um, this could be one of those ones where they just wanted to put out some feelers early to see what the response was um, B&W has had some leadership changes over the recent years so it's not that stable per, you know i would say even though the brand is very well known very well respected and the quality of their products are great um i just think that uh it may be uh, a stronger financially stronger company acquiring a, a company that's been a little bit uh shaky in terms of where they're going yeah that's really interesting katie um I, i'm really glad you're on because I'm still, I can't get over the fact of how this was released. It, it, the timing. <laughs> it, the, the timing is just obscene. It, it, it really is. When you get past the, 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 
potential for this to be purchased. Is, is this something where likely they had this in the works? It was going to maybe come out today, um, and somebody saw it, or somebody made it, you know, an, an implication that they were going to leak this. Is that more likely what this is? Because announce an announcement about a potential acquisition. It's just messy. It, it it is and and like Jeremy said you know from a from a PR Barry day I mean that's definitely you know Friday there's I think it's kind of backing up I mean there's you know, there's timing is everything and particularly in PR strategy um, yeah, and when news is ready to go for beginning of the week sometimes it makes sense to send it over to editors early on the day on Friday <laughs> before they get ahead of their weekends with with a note that goes along and says hey just you know doing a favor getting this over to you early for next week based on your writing timeline, here, here you go, you know, thanks for your support kind of thing, but I'm just giving you a little extra time. Certainly a strategy there. And Jeremy, I, I you know, I, I've done that with, with you over the years. And I, I think that certainly is appreciated, but when it doesn't kind of go over with that sort of a delivery and it's that late in the day and, and you've got PR people saying, yeah, I just heard about this myself too. That does, um, that does tend to make you make a question. Um, you know, I, I'm not on the front end of that, so I can't, you know, I speak with no authority whatsoever, but it does, it definitely does kind of raise, raise the eyebrow. eyebrow. And I think, you know, it's, this, this brand has just sort of been a little challenged over, <laughs> over, over the years. So it doesn't really come as much of a surprise. It is a very interesting move though, when you consider the stable that Sound United has amassed over the years mm -hmm. and how they are supporting those brands in the CI channel. Um, you know, and, and Mike, maybe you've got some, some experience there. I, you know, I, I don't know, but, you know, I think that, um, you know, sometimes when brands come into the control of those who really understand the custom market and the custom installation process, great things can happen there. Timing is really weird. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> you know, that's, I'm just going to pause on that. Timing is really, yes. is really weird. And the fact that it's not closed yet. Not that, that there's a precedent there. We, there was another deal that was announced quite recently, and that one also is not yet closed. Um, and that one's huge. Yeah. But, you know, I think, so, you know, I don't want to over speculate too much there, but again, timing is everything. And this is cool. Kind of a little odd. Yeah. Peter, let, let, let me come to you real quick. Uh, Katie brought up the brand of b and it, it is a very strong brand. It is one of those, uh, my company's never personally sold b and but it is one of those brands we come up against all the time where you get somebody who maybe, dare I say, doesn't know a ton about the space but they want a really high end brand. They want B and W. That is the the line they want. Being acquired by Sound United and put into again good company with Denon, Polk, Marantz, Deftech, Kios, Class A, Boston Acoustics, etc. Like that's a good stable of brands. But maybe they don't have the cachet that B and W might have from a consumer standpoint. Is this something that could be? Um, detrimental to the to the BMW brand or, or does ownership matter in this case? I, I, I don't think the average person that buys Bowers and Wilkins has any knowledge whatsoever or any care who the company's holding company is. There are very, very, very few brands in the industry or in generally in consumer electronics that you can call iconic. And you'd you'd have to say that Bowers and Wilkins are one of those I don't know, maybe five, six, seven truly I iconic brands. And just on a sort of separate note, whenever I go to the Munich High End Show, um, which has now become the world's biggest and probably most important high end audio audio show, uh, happens in Munich in Germany. Most Mays didn't happen this May, but hopefully next year most I'll go Mays. on the ang uh, annual pilgrimage again and uh, eat pork knuckle and drink fabulous Munich beer. But the thing that always strikes me every time I go to that show is, does the world really need another loudspeaker company? That there just seem to be loudspeaker companies popping up here, there, and everywhere. And I think there's, there's now really very, very little to, to, to separate a lot of them. Back, back in the day when material science was a black art, we didn't have computers to model things. It was really, really difficult to make a competent loudspeaker. These days, it's much, much, much simpler to make a pretty competent loudspeaker. And you, you pays your money, you takes your choice. There's not that many bad loudspeakers out there. So what really separates a lot of them as far as the consumer's concerned, and for me as a custom installer, if I put a proposal in front of a company and my loudspeakers are from some random unknown company, I've probably got to back that up with some reason why I sell it. 
you have Bowers and Wilkins on that proposal, and the chances are the customer's going to go, ah, Bowers and Wilkins. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard of them. And really, when you're, when you're trying to sell in a very, very, very noisy environment, and I, you know, noisy, it's, it's, it's not meant to be a pun. We're talking commercially noisy. We're talking loads and loads and loads of different loudspeaker manufacturers, all competing for the same space with really very little between them. We had loudspeaker manufacturers coming out of their ears saying, want to sell our speakers? And the question is, so what's different? And they, they, they gave the spiel and go, well, so really nothing's different. You're just like everyone else. But with, with Bowers and Wilkins, um, I'm sure that a big part of it is Sound United looking at it and going, wow, this, this could be as iconic an iconic anchor brand as we could ever hope for. Yeah, very much so. All right, Mike, we'll give you kind of the, the final word on this one. As, mm -hmm. as, as the, the only other dealer, uh, you know, Peter and yourself on this, when you, when you see this, when you follow this, and if you're a Sound United dealer, what does this mean to you? I, I, I would make the assumption, because this is normally what happens, that now once this deal closes, if it closes, that not every uh, integrator or dealer who's a Sound United dealer will have access to the B and W line. But if that happens, how do you how do you position this? How do you how do you leverage this when all of a sudden you might have access to that iconic brand as Peter alluded to, when you've already got this stable of brands that you work with? It's almost like Christmas, you know, you were been given this this out of nowhere, like we've been under this COVID and whatever funk, and we've been given this pearl out of nowhere. So there will be d dealers that had no chance to be anywhere near this product, which will have an opportunity. That doesn't mean they're going to achieve anything because at this realm to sell something at this price point, you need a customer. And if you're not used to selling at this level, then it doesn't matter. You could have all the resources in the world. No one will buy anything. So, but BMW, the, I remember seeing the Nautilus and seeing their speaker and, and crowding it like, wow. And you didn't even have to turn it on. You just wanted to look at it. And that's that perceived value that went beyond its sonic ability. It was, the, it was its look, its feel, that, that, you know, that internal, that feeling like when someone, oh, I... I have a, a McLaren, but you know, people, you know, people still love saying I have my Ferrari or Lamborghini, even though there seems to be brands that have exceeded them. This is one of those Ferrari brands where it's the brand name is common enough that everyone knows it. It's high enough where people perceive it as the best brand that you can buy. And I'm sure there's brands that are better and worse, but the perceived the average individual is like, wow, that's the best speaker. And when you ask them, if you were just to ask people like, tell me a really good speaker brand, average person would be like BMW. That's like, that's the best. And that, to have that ability in your stable of brands, that's probably one of, uh, one of the biggest things that you can, um, you can really do. And I think that will also bring more recognition and everything into their stable, giving them more, you know, more control. Hey, thanks for watching the first segment of this week's episode. To catch the entire show, please click the link below or visit avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv.